Okay, so now we're going to be starting on our first ever Elite Code problem. And the problem is twosome. This is supposed to be the easiest problem in the entire uh, website list of problems of the 1,298 problems now, as of December 27th, 2019. And so let's get to work on it. So basically what happens, what it wants you to do is it gives you a list of numbers and a target. And so you're supposed to find the two numbers in that list of numbers that add up to the target, hence two sum. The, so in the sample we're given, two and seven add up to nine, the target. So the we would return the indices of two and seven, which would be zero and one. So you can see that. So there are a couple of methods that we can use to approach this. First thing we're gonna do though is just brute force. So this should be really easy to code, but harder on the computer to run. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate through each of these numbers and then iterate through each of the numbers after that number and see, and basically just try every combination and see if any of them add up to the target, which is nine for our test case. So let's go ahead and just return an empty vector just to get rid of this red squiggly. And then we'll go ahead and iterate. So we're gonna get the, the index first and then the actual number. So num, num1, which will be the first number, and then we'll get num2. And then we'll iterate through nums, and then we'll have to enumerate. And so what the iter is going to do is turn this into an iterator, which will just cycle through the list of numbers. And then enumerate actually gives us the index as well as that actual number. So that's gonna give us i num1. And then we're going to do the same thing again, except we're going to call this index j and the second number number two. And we're going to iterate through the numbers again, only we're going to skip the first i plus one. So instead of starting at zero, if i is zero, we're going to start at zero plus one, which would be seven which would be one, uh, which uh, would be the index of seven. So the first number would be two plus seven, which would add up to nine. So we're immediately gonna find it for this test case, but we're gonna also make it generalizable to any possible combination of numbers. And we're guaranteed to get this, so it doesn't matter if we, we don't have to plan for not having it in there. Although we sort of do by having just an empty vector returned. So we're gonna skip that and then we're going to enumerate again, and that is going to give us the index and the number. So just to show what would happen if I didn't, uh, if I didn't give the, do the enumerate. So let's just actually, let's copy this, and then comment this out, and then we'll just, this is just, I'm just sort of doing a little bit of a uh, rudimentary introduction for people who might not be completely familiar. So this is with the i. So we'll do i plus num1 and we'll just print it out to the console so that we can, oops, uh, cargo run. So we're just gonna print it out to the console. So you can see we just iterate through everything and we hit the index and the number. So now let's just do, let's remove the enumerate and then we can see what, oh shoot. So we gotta delete this too. And we also have to remove one of these. I didn't even know it would, well, that's pretty advanced. Okay, so now that's just giving us the actual numbers. So that's what that's the difference between the iter and just, and the enumerate. So, well we can just delete this now cause that's just sample code. And then we'll go through here and we'll check. So we will see if num1 plus num2 equals the target. Oops, that double equals. Then we'll just go ahead and return uh, a new vector with i and j. 
So, but we're going to have to actually say j plus 1 plus i because we actually, so the enumerate doesn't actually know that we skipped all these. So it's going to start at 0, so we have to actually add the i plus 1, and that's going to give us the actual uh, number for the actual uh, index of the second number. So, and we also have to have this as an i32, i32, a 32-bit integer, and that's because we have to cast this because as a 32-bit integer, and that's because the enumerate gives us a u size, uh, so that's actually the size of the uh, location uh, in memory of the number. So, so um, that's what it has to be because the i is just going to be a location for memory. So it only has to be u size. So, and then we will also cast this to an i32 because even though they could have just asked for a u size, I think they probably should have. They asked for a 32-bit integer there. And we have to put a semicolon here. I think we do because uh, this is actually a statement. And we can't just leave off the semicolon and omit the return. We do here, so if you don't put a semicolon, it's returned. But because this is inside this if block, inside this for, it's in, it's not in the main block, we have to explicitly return this. Okay, so let's just run that. And it works, so we just passed the test. Unfortunately, it's not really obvious what happened, but we can go ahead and submit this to leak code and it should work if not we can so I, I already did this I messed it up a few times I might hide this stuff so you can't see that I messed it up okay so that is the inefficient way so this is only more efficient than 6.45 percent it's because we're just essentially brute forcing it. I mean, there is ways we could make it even less efficient, but uh, this is the most viable brute force method. And so now we'll do the efficient method, which we're going to be using a hash table. So why would we use a hash table? Well, a hash, if you don't know, is basically a dictionary referenced group of numbers so think of like think of it like a dictionary like if you go to look up a word in the dictionary what do you do do you open the dictionary and then look at the first page and and just keep flipping through the page no you if you're going to do a binary search you would split it in half and open it if you're at if you open it to o then you would go then you would split it in half again with the first or the first set of pages if you're looking for, say, uh, L. So you're going to split it in half, and then you're going to keep doing that with the half that contains your, uh, your word until you find it. But that's unlike with a brute force search. So instead of just cycling through each of these numbers, we can put the hash of the number and then subtract the second number from the target and see see if that number is in the hash. Okay, so now let's do it in a more efficient manner. So we can delete, we can keep this because we will need to enumerate through all the numbers and we need to go ahead and return this vector. And then, but this time we're going to use a hash map. And so we'll create a hash here. Let me hash. And that will be the number that indexes the actual index, which will be u size. And that will just and we'll just create a new one. Alright. So now we have now what we're going to do is add, oops, we're going to 
get find the complement of this number that adds up to the target. So that is going to equal, so we'll say the complement equals target minus num. Okay, and then we'll check. So if let sum complement index equals, and then we'll search the hash. So get the uh, complement, and we're going to pass that by reference because we just wanted to borrow the reference. And so if that exists, then we'll then that means that the, that the complement was found in the hash. And so we'll pass that index plus the index of the current number because those will add up to the target. Okay, so we'll return a new vector with uh, complement index as i32 because for some reason it wants you to return it as i32, which we already covered. And there we go. So, and then otherwise, so we don't have to use an else because this is returning anyway. What is happening here? So I guess I need, this is returning a reference, so we need to uh, get the actual value. Okay, and then, then we'll actually insert a new, uh, we'll insert the num and the i. So that should work. Num, oh, we have to insert a reference. Oh, oops, I mean, <laughs> got to dereference that. Okay, and that sends me the actual value. Okay, so that is passing our test. Let's see if it passes the actual test. So I'm going to copy that. Oops, over here. And we'll run it, see if we pass the test. See if Facebook will let us join their company. And we got faster than 100% uh, speed, but we did use a lot of memory because obviously we had a hash map, so we're, so it's a given trade take. So we can look over here, see, see what it, other people did. Rush using hash map. So this guy did it a little differently than I. He actually checked uh, if it contains the key, and if it did, then he pushed it out. That's a little kind of sloppy, I think. No offense. And this guy, so he basically, oh, this isn't, that's the brute force method we talked about. Rest zero milliseconds. I think we had zero milliseconds too. Um, so that's just a little messier than ours. So, okay, so pretty much everyone has the same one that we did. And, okay, so that's two sum. So our next problem will be...